Bongiorno, welcome, welcome to another John R. Art with JB. So today I'm going to be doing part two of Magneto using the Loomis method. Last week we went over the basic construction of the figure. As you can see, I've gone in and, and I have started sort of massing in some of the muscles. Got a good deal of detail done on the torso already, a good deal of detail done on the legs. But there's a few things I want to point out to you guys before I move forward with this. Um, you might be able to notice if we zoom in really closely, I got a little bit of a, uh, there's a little bit of a ghost line from where I shifted Magneto's leg slightly. And I've also shifted the uh, <clears throat> pose of Magneto's face to a more straight on shot as opposed to a three fourths shot. Uh, and today what I'm going to be doing is just massing in the rest of the values here, detailing the costume, right, and sort of filling in the basic figure construction um, using that that figure construction that we did last week essentially as a road map for where I'm going to put the muscles. One, a few things I want to point out here about how I went about rendering some of the muscles and indicating some of the shapes that make up the body. Um, when you're laying in muscles, what you want to do is uh, you want to operate under the assumption that less is more. Um, so you'll notice I leave a lot of room for the shapes to breathe. There's actually a lot of negative space in here. I'm not really going that crazy with the rendering. And where I am feathering, I'm using my feathering to reinforce my spot blacks. So the feathering kind of is more of an of a device used to make a blurred edge, where that spot black is transitioning into uh, the light tone. And then in certain areas, I am going in with additional feathering to indicate a half tone. And I can go over this and indicate that pretty clearly with a micron. It's just a matter of, you know, going over this with two passes as opposed to this, which I would go over with, you know, one pass with a thinner micron pen. So I will be doing a part three of this um, where I actually ink over this in micron, similar to the first video that I did. Let me just shift that down there. Um, but... Um, before I do that, a few other updates on the videos I will be putting out. I will be doing a hand tutorial next week. I know a few of you have expressed interest in me doing hands, right? So that will be next on the agenda. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to go in here and lay in some of these um, tones. So sort of go in. And I'm just laying in shapes, basically. Sort of connecting these in. <clears throat> I can come down here. Let me grab a piece of scratch off paper so that I prevent smudging. I can use just one of these random sheets lying around here that I have. And I'm using a Pentel 0.5 mechanical pencil for this. And we're already at 3.09, so I want to get underway here. And I'm just kind of looking at where I put my previous shapes here. To kind of get a sense of where I want... all of those shapes on the body to go. I've thought about recording a Zoom class, but the problem with my Zoom classes that I run is sometimes the camera conks out and it makes for sort of a disjointed recording. I can compensate for it in real time with my students, but I feel like for the YouTube format, I wouldn't necessarily get the um, you guys wouldn't be getting the full experience, the full sort of benefit from a tutorial done in that way. So what I want to do is I just want to focus on just massing in these values. And that foot looks pretty good. <clears throat> Next thing I want to do is just 
look over my drawing here, clean up some areas with my kneaded eraser. I've already cleaned this up quite a bit. <clears throat> Again, lots of negative space, variation in line weight, right? And again, the Loomis method is sort of the crux of how I would arrive at this sort of, you know, this, you know, this sort of uh, point in the figure drawing. Um, you know, the eight heads tall, you know, doing a wireframe first, all that good stuff. I'm just looking up some costume reference real quick because I actually forgot how this glove fits in here. But the figure I've done completely out of my head. <clears throat> Let's see here. Magneto costume. Images. forgot how many costumes Magneto had. Well, I can't find a good reference, but that's okay. I think I have enough information where I can just wing it here. So what I want to do is just, again, go in with my kneaded eraser now that I have my construction down, and I want to get a ghost line. And one thing I forgot to do was turn on some relaxing Nintendo music, so let's do that. Here we go. Now that I have my ghost line, what I can do is I can go in and lay in the actual muscle groups. I'll start with the hand here. And usually when I'm doing hands, I like to think of the thumb as, you know, directly a part of that palm. And you want to think about what lines are cutting in front of what. Let's beef up that thumb a little bit. I am doing my best to put out these videos every Tuesday, but it's proving a little more problematic than I thought. I'm definitely shooting for a video a week for you guys, and I will do my best to stick to that Tuesday release schedule. I'm also going to look into updating the opening sequence of each video, get a little title card going and all that good stuff. Little intro skit. I need to look into video editing tech. So if any of you guys have good suggestions in terms of, you know, where to start with video editing, what applications, what programs, um, feel free to chime in, in the comments below. Just want to make sure that you guys are getting a good visual here. And since I've already found the silhouette, I want to start from there, but I want to take into account um, <clears throat> sort of this elbow, you know, behind this arm, which is cutting in as it's coming forward, right? That's something that a lot of novice artists kind of get wrong about the elbow. And then we have this bicep, right? And we have this indentation here, this insertion point. And again, you don't want to over render here. A 
A lot of this is just, it comes down to comparative anatomy. Right? Just sort of playing around with the shapes, seeing what works, what doesn't. So I don't really want to over render again. I'm just gonna indicate that just like that. You always want to give your elbow, so you want to make sure this bone is going across into your elbow and you want your elbow to really have a distinct bend to it. You don't want to not give your character an elbow. That was something an editor told me years ago when I was applying for, when I started applying for jobs. It was actually a guy <laughs> uh, from Zenoscope Comics years ago told me, make sure you give your characters elbows. That's when I was starting out shopping my portfolio around. I'm just kind of cleaning up the bicep area here. That looks pretty good so far. Again, no over-rendering, right? We're just laying in, we're, we wanna get the shape relationships correct. That's the main thing. The rendering is almost inconsequential. And there we have his arm sort of successfully laid in. going in now and going over my hands again now the hands what you want to do is again you want to get this bridge of the palm sort of masked in you want to think about you know the, the sort of shapes that make up the bridge of the palm um i want to come in and get sort of the bend of the fingers here i want to come in from one side and just draw these lines cutting in a little bit into the finger and I'll go into the hands at length more next week in a hand tutorial. Superhero hands are a little different. A lot of artists tend to make this, the hands a little bit bigger than they normally would appear in uh, superhero art. And because Magneto's wearing gloves, that makes our life easier in a lot of ways. We don't have to like account for the nail and how to render that in. Right. Not bad. No, not particularly great either. So I want to come in and just clean this hand up a little.
And again, I'm just kind of playing around with shapes here. It's not bad. And we want to get that indentation of the palm. And you can always sort of reference your own hand too in this instance, right? So I've got my reference right in front of me. You want to use that. And now that we have his glove masked in, we're just kind of painting his, or his hand masked in, we're painting his glove right on top of that. I might want to bring this down a little bit. Not bad at all. And he's got one of these weird strappy type of gloves. I always had issues drawing this glove when I was a kid. See, and I got, I got the rendering wrong. <laughs> this is where his glove actually starts. So what I want to do is I actually want to come in here and just mass in some dark value in the underside of his arm here. pretty good Get my line weights a little bit. And I would highly recommend again using a mechanical pencil for this type of work because this will make rendering a lot easier. And you want to use that negative space to kind of indicate, you know, areas of tension in the muscles. Although not always, right? Like here, I kind of want to reel it back a little bit, maybe make this more part of the shape of the design of the glove. So much. And I can come in.
and do a little feathering action here to kind of indicate sort of a transition from spot blacks, right? To the bridge of the palm. You know, a lot of this is, there's two components to figure drawing. One component is understanding shapes, another component is understanding value, right? And part two, this particular section is really um, where understanding value comes in and understanding where to render and where not to render. Now that I have that completed, what I'm going to do is just erase out some additional guidelines here on my drawing. You can see that's Magneto so far, looking very menacing. I think I'm going to do the Richard Gere thing where I just give Magneto his white mullet. Well, my cat is causing some major issues. I just got to separate these guys real quick. I'll leave this on. Come on. All right, I'm back. That was my crazy Siamese cat. She wanted to get out. So I let her outside. In any event, where were we? Yes, we got the arm mast in. I've demonstrated how you can go over the basic construction of the figure using, you know, the Loomis method and then mass in the values. Now what we're going to do is pivot up to the face. Then I'm going to render in the cave detail, the collar up here, and that will be the end of this section. <clears throat> so one thing I want to do is, you know, with the face, I kind of want to mirror the Loomis method for drawing the face that I went over a few videos ago. Um, for those of you guys who are curious, Loomis has a book, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth. Um, and he has some great faces in that book. So I highly recommend picking that up. Just do this. What I want to do with Magneto's face, again, just like with the arm, I want to start with the ghost line. I want to come in, find this plane, right? Because I already have the structure of the face. So I want to come in about thirds of the way on each side, if this was a straight face, and I'm going to lay in my three columns for the eyes. You know, this second column should straddle the center line. And that's basically, you know, going to denote the eyes. Although in this case, this will be the upper edge of the eyes. Then from here, what I want to do is come down I'm just going to find my nose, and then from there, real quick, I'm going to find my lips, right? Now with superheroes, typically we kind of stylize a little bit with the eyes. I'm actually going to come in. 
can do just that. Notice how I'm leaving little gaps in the eyes here. <clears throat> and I'm treating the eye as one shape. Oh, that was smooth. comes in handy for sort of indicating the eyes. And make sure you keep that tip. Nice and sharp. There are other ways you can do the eyes, but you know, for this, what I'm gonna do is just come in. I'm actually going to shift this a little so I can see more clearly. I'm going to get rid of the side here. And you're just kind of pushing and pulling the shapes using the kneaded eraser to make a ghost line. tilting the eyes a little bit to give him more of a sort of menacing look. And there I can find the bridge of the nose pretty quickly. Sort of a grimacing face. That's the face of a villain if I've ever seen one. Sort of 
arch these nostrils up a little bit because when you're angry you tend to arch your nostrils And then we can do one of these things where we come in and just continue to adjust the eyes, right? Using my kneaded eraser. You want to mass in that upper lip, but not necessarily do the lower lip completely. Right now he looks pretty young, but we're going to age him up a little bit. Just want to check my symmetry. I'm gonna get that cheek sort of masked in here. It's looking pretty good on my screen. And to age up the face, you, you know, generally speaking, the more lines you add, the more sort of crease marks you add, the more aged the face will appear. And Magneto's you know, he's in insane shape. <laughs> Again, he's kind of like Richard Gere when Richard Gere was younger. He's got that gray and he's in his 
middle years, but he's still in insane shape, so you want to try to indicate both of those things. I mean, in the comics, technically, I think he was de-aged. Um, getting a little bit of a chin there. And it's looking pretty solid, I think. And I, I still maintain, you know, superhero art, one of the toughest types of art to do. Because um, there's so many moving parts to doing modern superheroes. I mean, the standard for one has gone way up since the 90s and 80s. Um, the fans demand a lot more detail, a lot more believability. And it's straddling that line right between believability and larger than life and making it look like all the shapes are natural and they're fitting together it, you know cohesive whole is you know an accurate representation of the human figure but at the same time knowing when you can stretch the bounds of what of what is reality right like you know how do you like just push that muscle just past the point of just up to the line of believability right i can just sort of silo this ear in over here <clears throat> He's looking quite evil. <laughs> At this point, you can see I've already sort of indicated my hairline. So I think with Magneto, he's got like a part, like a side part. Right. That kind of goes like this. I call it the Magneto mullet. And I'm leaving this sort of sketchy because I can go in with my microns and clean all this up. Again, understanding shape relationships, shape language. <clears throat> How all these different moving parts sort of fit together in a cohesive whole. And I'm going to probably put Iron Man down here at some point. This will be sort of a multi-part video in which I sort of demo a little bit more of the piece each with each ensuing week, although I will be taking detours, doing hand tutorials, things that are a little bit more geared towards the structure, the structural end of drawing, right? Just like last, last week, uh, my Magneto tutorial part one was very much focused on just the structural elements of figure drawing and really, you know, using the Loomis method to really flesh out the rough state of your drawing, because I'll tell you this, in my experience, the rough stage of your drawing is where 90% of your drawing problems will happen. And that's where, why Loomis is so beneficial, is because Loomis will allow you to sort of skirt those issues. You know, it's almost like a hack for, it's a Loomis, I, I, I think of Andrew Loomis's like method as a hack for human anatomy. With the hair, you want to keep the shapes fairly big. You don't want to you don't want to render every single hair follicle or every single fiber. Um, you want to keep those the hair. It's all about simplifying econom economization of line, right? You want to you want to be economical with your line weights. <clears throat> and unlike my first video that I ever did. <laughs> I'm not doing a clickbait thing where I put up a picture of Wolverine and then the video is a Loomis head, a five minute sort of protracted version of the Loomis head. 
Uh, I'm not really a fan of that little wisp of hair going there. So let's just do this. Just keep the hair relatively simple again. Everybody has a different sort of approach for hair. My approach is to kind of keep it relatively simple. Um, even here, sort of maybe like take back some of those lines a little bit so that it doesn't veer too much into anime territory. Come in, maybe take a page out of Loomis. Because Loomis actually was very good at hair as well. Or Loomis would just kind of do the blacks and do the whites, kind of like here. Feather out these edges a little bit. Keep this kind of raw looking. kind of get the individual hairline you can kind of just do one of these things where you're coming in again using black shapes and negative space to indicate mass as opposed to you know rendering every single detail and the same principle applies to painting right if I wanted to give them some more sort of frown lines I could totally do that you want to be careful of again over rendering though adding too many frown lines I mean I think a lot of people a lot of artists that I admire in the 90s, they were very good at sort of throwing lines on the face and making it work because their knowledge of anatomy was so sort of innate and practiced in addition to being innate. They, they had like tons of training, paying their dues, trying to, you know, um, McFarlane, um, by his own admission, Todd McFarlane, one of my favorite artists, was up till 3 a.m. in the morning, you know, he'd get home from his janitorial job and he'd be drawing comics and, you know, on top of that, he already had like a pretty good grasp, innate grasp of the figure, I'd argue, if you look at his high school work. I have his book, which is sort of like an autobiography of his life from, you know, his early childhood up to 2012 when the book was published. And you can see some of his high school work. It's pretty advanced for a high school student, I think. Um, you know, obviously there's, it's not pro level at that point, but how many high schoolers are pro level at that point, you know? And he was um, very much uh, dedicated to his craft. And just because the deadlines were so crazy back then, and he was pushing himself to push the standard, he got very good at drawing the figure very quickly. And um, sort of, I've gone on a Todd McFarlane tangent. I forget what my original point was. Probably something to do with the fact that he was very good at economizing or he, very good at sort of making a lot of lines on the figure work to his advantage, which is not easy. And I actually kind of am of the opinion, you know, generally you want to reel it back a little bit if you're if you're not sure if you're going to get into trouble with over rendering. <clears throat> Some, you know, if you can add the detail in, like, you know, the detail is really in, in the structure, right? Um, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, see, like, even here, like, you need to be careful. Like, I, I mean, I don't mind adding a little bit of... ...frown, but you don't want him looking like a Klingon, either. I wouldn't even go any further than that. And I would have this kind of come up. <laughs> it's 
face or angry grimace, right? stylizing a little bit. All right, so at this point, I've got his face in, I've got his arm done. Let's zoom out a little bit. Now what I wanna do is his cape, and then we'll cut the video here, because this is almost an hour in. And then at some point I'll come back, and what I'll do is I will ink this. So the last thing I wanna do is get his little collar done in here. probably do like a one over here to kind of indicate that this is coming around again Magneto has a really weird costume it looks cool if you can get the anatomy right but it looks really weird if like your anatomy is even slightly off a lot of the X-Men are like that in fact a lot of superheroes are like that And I'm actually drawing, I'm, I'm, I, I would say if you look at Jim Lee or any of these guys that were really popular, a lot of people are under the misconception that they're really tight. Jim Lee is actually a very loose artist. It's Scott Williams that comes in and tightens him up. Um, in fact, I think I'm probably tighter than Jim Lee. Like, you know, which is not something that I, I'm trying my, for myself to be looser. Um, because I think that's what actually makes Sylvester and Jim Lee great. So McFarlane, right? And, you know, Liefeld, too, for that matter, in terms of his dynamics, um, is they are very sort of good at maintaining a looseness to their work. I mean, I would say out of all of them, Liefeld's the tightest. we're doing a three-fourths view here what I want to do is just come in and indicate that like so I want to maybe compress this a little round this Obviously, I want to take away a decent amount of that shadow area there.
Let's look at this through the camera. It looks pretty good. <clears throat> All right, and What I'm doing is I'm just kind of going in and rendering the cave now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going too crazy though. I want to leave a little bit of a stroke here. And hopefully this, these two videos, part one and two, have given you guys a solid sort of appreciation for you know, the Loomis method and how it can be used to draw a complete superhero figure, right? Here I'm just kind of arbitrarily making marks, really trying to heighten the theatricality of this cape. And then again, I could come in and tighten all this up. I haven't even checked the symmetry on this. I could upload this and it could be all busted looking. In fact, let me check the symmetry now before I upload this. Not bad. Not bad at all. <clears throat> Let me just hold it in the light. <clears throat> I do think I want to adjust the eyes a little bit. And again, not too bad. All right. <clears throat> then obviously I've stylized the face a great deal. This isn't sort of a, a representational face. I've kind of gone really anime with the eyes, but through my shapes. I'll come in 
here and basically I'm gonna feather this out I'm making a little bit of a narrow stroke. Let me look at this through. Take the eyes back a little. At the very least, that eye. Not bad at all. <clears throat> you come in. Let's finish this up here. And I'm going to give him some Kirby Crackle, you know, Kirby Crackle is basically his energy crackle. And like I was saying, I pretty much did this completely out of my head. I referenced the costume a little bit, you know, during my Zoom session when I was, you know, massing in the portion of this that I didn't do today. So, you know, just like the seams and all that and to get reference for his boots and whatnot. But the figure construction was completely out of my head as well as the face. And all I did was use the Loomis method, the method I'm teaching on this channel. Um, you know, I used uh, the eight heads tall, sort of start from the interior shape, while at the same time trying to get the silhouette down. Sort of way of working the figure. And that was something Loomis is very much a proponent of. And this again is a technique you can apply not only to academic realist drawing, but you can apply it to um, comic art, right? It's essential for any kind of comic artist to really study guys like Andrew Loomis, George Bridgman, David Finch. If I had to put money on it, I would say he was a disciple of Bridgman, at least in some sort of, even if it's in an indirect sort of osmosis type capacity, because his, his arms in particular remind me of Bridgman arms. Like he's got a very sort of almost blocky look to his arms, but blocky in a dynamic way. <clears throat> I 
I love capes. <laughs> you can do so many things with capes. Here, let me do a little uh, curvy crackle. Uh, another guy, Brett Booth, very, um, very good at doing a Magneto's energy crackle. I actually don't do too much energy. So I'm just gonna do pretty vanilla looking energy crackle here. I'm not gonna do anything too crazy. what I did. <laughs> right. And then um, that's it. There you have it. That is Magneto using the Loomis method, right? Part two. Part three, I'll do inking, but I think next week what I'm going to do is do a little hand tutorial, right? So again, thank you all for joining me today in this hour of drawing on this beautiful spring day. Arrivederci. Right, and until next time, happy drawing.